Crusader Kings 3 is a game that is absolutely loved by the entire family. Your wife, your sister, your mother, and your aunt at the same time. All of which are the same person, of course, are deeply disturbed by what's going on in this world. But, um, not to worry, because today we got a special video. I am collaborating with Paradox Interactive to bring you the Legends of the Dead DLC, where we will be using and abusing the new mechanics to a establish a legendary dynasty where Chaticus Maximus over here is going to be using various different types of plagues to secretly conquer the world from the shadow realm, okay? We're the one behind everything that's going on in this campaign. Psst, psst, hey, do me a favor, use my link below to get the DLC for yourself would really help out the channel massively and I'd actually really appreciate it. Clearly we're gonna be starting with 867 since uh, that is exactly when the worst plagues historically happened. So we, we, we gotta just uh, role play, don't we? To help us out with our plague empire and to just make the world a little bit more chaotic, we're also gonna have unlimited amounts of black death frequency, which yes, it's, it's, it's basically a scary as it sounds really. We're also gonna get high chance of legend spreading to adjacent provinces and plague frequency is gonna be very often and just to spice things up we're also gonna set the uh, Mongol invasion at a random time alongside a lot of the other things here they're gonna start at different times just so we don't really know when it's gonna happen. You also probably guessed it but we will be playing as the Byzantines. <laughs> There's no greater nation in Crusader Kings 3 than uh, the Byzantine Empire. We do have a little bit of a tumultuous period in 86 67, and I'm gonna give a little bit of a historical background to the Byzantine Empire as well before we do that though Let's go ahead and create our own ruler and give him the proper name a very Byzantine name Chaticus Maximus pretty much eight out of seven kids were named this name uh, everybody knows this It's totally not made up maybe obviously I would never make up such things clearly We're gonna be an honest and forgiving Emperor just like uh, pretty much all Byzantine emperors were clearly they did and just, you know, start all the most random stuff imaginable. No, that doesn't sound like the Romans at all. Also gonna go ahead and give them Scholar so that uh, we can develop our provinces. Whatever the case, we will try to get back our Byzantine lands, but at the same time, we will be going ahead with developing and making the provinces that we own super high value, of course. We're gonna give ourselves also whole of body because there's gonna be a lot of plague around us and we kinda wanna have some traits to help us not die from that plague you know same thing here athletic should help us out with that it gives us another small health boost and stress loss as does hail so that's 396 that should be fine in my opinion we could uh also give him a little bit of intrigue because right now he's got zero intrigue wait is that still zero how is that still zero oh because if we're giving an honest we actually get a lot of intrigue reduct we are chaticus but we're probably gonna get assassinated aren't we by one of our trusted advisors <laughs> i have the best solution to that though i'm gonna change the appearance everybody knows if you've got a really mean looking person that they're not gonna get assassinated so um let's give them a proper mediterranean look customize further yep we're a long head definitely a long head oh look how long that head is over there oh my god that's a big brain head as well okay we have a little bit of a uh, superpower as i like to call it our ears have two functions. Not only can we hear, but we can also take flight with these ears. This chin reminds me a little bit of uh, a very famous Habsburg Emperor, which also coincidentally is uh, something we're gonna be practicing here in our empire, because we wanna keep that wealth in the family, you know what I mean? That is so freaking creepy. Oh my god, he looks like a porcupine human. I love it. Clearly this is the perfect Byzantine Emperor right there. Let's uh, start off this saga. Now, as I said before, let's Let's give a little bit of a historical background to the Byzantines because I know a lot of you probably don't realize what sort of a situation the Byzantine Empire was facing. In 867 the Byzantine Empire had been fighting the Muslims for more than 250 years ever since the emergence of Islam from the Arabian Peninsula and the subsequent conquest of a massive amount of Byzantine Empire lands as well as the collapse of the Sassanids and the onslaught and the expansion of Islam into the eastern parts and into the central 
central bit of Asia. That being said, in 867, Basil I, which, uh, by the way, started his life as a mere peasant and managed to work his way through society, eventually becoming the emperor of the Byzantine Empire in his 50s, I believe, because he was born in 811 to peasant parents. I really feel like uh, we should have some movies made about Basil I because he was an actual freaking Chad, even though I replaced him with Chadicus Maximus, who is also a Chad. Now, you probably notice we do have Bulgaria to the northern parts and to the uh, northwestern parts, the rest of the uh, Slavic nations here. The Bulgarians were a love-hate relationship with the Byzantines. At some points, the Bulgarians helped the Byzantines against the Arab invaders, and at other points, they fought each other with, more famously, some uh, Byzantine emperor having become a skull mug for a Bulgarian Tsar to drink from. So, yeah, it was complicated, let's say. The war that we start with here, in which the uh, Aglabid Sultanate is conquering Sicily, historically finished with uh, the conquest being a win for the Muslims because they did capture the city of Syracuse a few years afterwards. I don't remember exactly when, but I think like 70, 873 or 876, something like that, they did capture it. Suffice to say that in our timeline, it's going to be a little bit different. We will be taking back our lands from the uh, Muslims and we will push towards restoring the Roman Empire. Now, let's see what our current situation is here. So, we have a few holdings. Obviously, we have Constantinople, our capital. We've got Brisis, Adrianopolis. I think we have some more holdings. Uh, anywhere else? Let's see. Kalipolis. Oh, okay. So, we literally just have the four provinces and traits, essentially. Cool, cool. That's all that we need. We'll make sure that these lands are super well defended. And we're also going to make sure that we expand into the eastern bits and uh, destroy the Abbasids. Around the 800s, the uh, Muslims were actually surprisingly weaker than they were 200 years prior when they started their invasions. They were a lot more divided. There was actually a lot of conflict between them. But at the same time, the Byzantines had uh, an unlikely enemy, namely a band of Christians, especially from the Armenian lands, that followed a different types, well, various different types of Christianity. And they were kind of not welcomed in the Byzantine Empire. So they allied themselves with the Abbasids and fought against the Byzantines. There's even a very famous, uh, Byzantine rebel Leo of uh, Trace, I believe, or Leo of Tripoli. Leo of Tripoli, yes, he was originally from Tripoli. He uh, fought against the Byzantines, his own people, converted to Islam, and he led a siege against the city of Thessaloniki, which uh, in this timeline was the second best and biggest city and most economically developed city of the Byzantine Empire. He sacked Thessaly, or Thessaloniki, whatever you want to call it, which led the Byzantines to sack other cities and uh, the Syrian bits, and then it led to more conflict. The Byzantines tried to retake the uh, island of Crete and failed. Now, let's go ahead and uh, set up our empire here. We've got quite a little bit of money here. We have uh, from domains, 22 ducats. We also have eight from our vassal taxes. So we're going to put that to very good use, actually. Let's see. Let's go ahead and uh, build up a hospice and some walls and towers. I'm gonna build walls and towers first and I'm gonna build a hospice afterwards. I'm obviously building hospice in my towns because uh, you probably noticed I have extremely high likelihood of getting uh, the plague and everything around here. So I'd rather have a little bit of resistance to the plague in my land at least. Plus the bright side is that hospices give us a 0.2 monthly tax as well. So it's not too bad overall either. And some piety as well. Obviously to get proper amounts of uh, money we probably Probably should get some manor houses and so on. We still have money after building all that, so uh, we can arrange some tournaments, grand tours. Don't need that just yet, though. Maybe I'll go ahead and I'll uh, start a university visit. Why the hell not, bro? I think I'm gonna do that. Screw it. Planned university visit. We're gonna go to the University of Constantinople. That is because it's very close and we don't really like to get out of the house too much. We're essentially medieval gaming right here. Wow, we have literally the worst caravan masters in imaginable. I'm gonna sign this guy. He's pretty bad at it, but I, I mean, better than nothing, I guess, right? It's gonna cost us 413. Oh my god. We're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna have books and notes. That's it. Study hard. Uh, or we can choose Goliardic lifestyle. Right, okay. So basically party or study. I'm gonna go for study. Hopefully that's gonna get me um, a little bit of um, brain enlargement, if you know what I mean here. Let's also go and select the stewardship as our main lifestyle 
lifestyle and courtier and guest opinion plus 20 not so bad actually screw it let's go for duty focus i like that i like duty focus we need to get married as well so let's search for somebody that has inheritable traits Ooh, i like this one robust and this one's got quick okay anybody that has something a little bit better here amazonian oh my god and she's vlak she's one of my people she's a romanian boys send a proposal it's gonna cost us a little bit of prestige because she's not very noble but it's fine the new basilius is here boyos we also need to raise our armies because we're going to have to fight against the Sicilians, obviously. All right. University visit, arrival at Constantinople. It is time to get started. What better thing to do if not just study in a university when your country is at war? Am I right, guys? Come on. That's the best thing ever. Let's check the guest list. It's a lot of people that nobody ever heard of. That is awesome. Okay. The men haven't been mustered. Let's send them off to uh, fight against the Abbasids or whoever these guys are. Ablagids or whatever. Siege down their capital and wasp my troops. Troops are fighting, killing each other, smashing each other's heads. What's going on in the university, you say? I don't have time for your nonsense, Pascalius. Or I'll just go. What's going on? Pascalius has studied for 36 hours straight. Okay, well, I don't care, Pascalius. That's your problem, sir. We've caught them off guard and we're pulling their pants down and wiping out the floor with them because uh, we're Romans. That's, that's just what Romans do, all right? Romans like to wipe the floor with um, Abbasid scumbags. And yes, I, I know once more I said Abbasid and they're not, but it's fine. Shut up, okay? Just don't think about it too much. Go ahead and uh, push over here. We want to take their capital. Maybe we capture the leader of the Aglabids and then we can just get rid of this war once and for all. Okay, we have gained the fortune builder trait, which offers plus six stewardship, monthly stewardship lifestyle experience, plus 30% and two stewardship lifestyle perks unlock. Oh my God, that is actually a lot. Finish university visit. Huh, let's go ahead and do it. All right, awesome. So now we can use um, our stewardship perks to get, what are we going to go for? For. Demand payment for hooks, collect taxes, affix. Oh, 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 I'm going for cutting cornerstone. Hell yeah. And then building construction time reduction 30% is massive as well, so I'm gonna go for that. So now I just realized universities are freaking insane. I'm loving that. We got two perks from just going to university and studying. That is amazing, bro. Let's also set up our court because we haven't really done so and settle the issues that we have. Court artifacts, let's uh, attach these bad boys. Pedestals, Crown of Justinian, okay. Domain plus one, that is pretty strong actually. Flavius Dynasty Banner, don't mind if I do. Flavius House Banner, don't mind if I do also. The Pentapyrgion, the elegant cupboard was built by Emperor Theophilus to display vases, crowns, and other valuables in the Christocriculopos. I like this, man. The artifacts give massive freaking uh, bonuses to your character and to your realm. All right, we're in the process of sieging this down as well. Let's split this army over in half and get half of these troops over here. Siege down the adjacent castles, actually. Oh, this one over here looks good to me. And let's also try and seduce our wife so we can have some babies, shall we? Romance? Hell yeah, let's romance her. 100% chance. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's extremely realistic, by the way. If you play video games, you have a 100% chance to romance another, um, another gamer. Totally. In fact, you know, the uh, people of the opposite gender love gamers. I have to say that I like the fact that you see now how many troops the enemy has if you like to declare war on somebody. That's a pretty nice quality of life improvement that they've done with uh, CK3 in my opinion. Seems like we have to teach the Aglabids uh, to mind their own business once more. Our troops are definitely way better than theirs are. So that should be a fairly easy battle. There you go. We've won that. Go ahead and uh, get the hell out of my face. We have to take back Syracuse though. But we have 100% of the war score. Okay, so we can enforce our demands here and we're gonna be getting 209 ducats can we get any hostages they don't have anybody that's awesome okay we don't have anybody also because we already uh asked for money for our hostage we're gonna get some uh, prestige and 200 legitimacy which is absolutely amazing so be it disband all the troops let's get back home and chill and have some fun and get ready for the next war because i do intend to attack the half sid emirates let's see uh how strong they are actually they've got 391 okay well i guess i can wait a little while before I attack them in that case. We can recruit a few more units in the meanwhile. Let's also station some of our units around. Uh, what the hell is going on here? Okay, we're going to station uh, our cataphracts in Constantinople. We're also going to station our onagers 
Caesars in Gallipoli and our second cataphract we're gonna station in uh, Adrianopolis. I actually want to recruit one more men at arms. I'm gonna go for armored footmen. We're gonna uh, station these bad boys in Brisis and let's increase their size a little bit as well. We're gonna try and get more size for all of our units. Uh, Onager is up to three. Cataphracts are maxed out. How about you guys? I'm missing 200 ducats. Okay. I want to have them up to level five so whenever we do declare the war against the, the Cretans we actually uh, have an easy time getting those lands. I'm doing this also because like I said earlier at the start of the campaign historically the reconquest of Crete which happened actually in the 900s wasn't as successful and I like to change history a little bit if you know what I mean. We're gonna try and uh, teach the half Sids that you do not mess with the Byzantine Empire and you especially don't take our lands. Crete was used as a base of operation from which the Arab fleet raided the coastline of the Byzantine Empire on multiple occasions even when they uh, raided Thessaloniki and other areas so this is uh, a little bit of a uh, hot spot as I would like to say and we don't want it to be that do we now oh we got a plague spreading no the August pox okay okay so the August pox is over here it's close to us it's not yet in our provinces but it's definitely close and we have another plague here what is this infection of Herabov Herabov flux oh boys that is not great 14 fatalities so far not that many but it just started spreading 11th of May so in just a few months it went from nothing to decimating the Ogos lands Ooh, how are we going with uh, our pilgrims quarters oh they're okay we're gonna upgrade this to a sick house afterwards once we have the money of course I'm actually getting really excited for this because I like the new uh, plague mechanics how they spread and everything I want to see if I'm gonna be able to use the plague to destroy most of my enemies and especially destroy the Arab lands by spreading it in there and at the same time I'll try to prevent the spread of it in my own empire. Gonna likely fail significantly but I'll try at least okay. I think it's time for me to also change my look a little bit. There you go this is more comfortable I'd say and it's uh it screams Byzantine fashion doesn't it? I mean look at that juicy delicious green beard over there if that's not sexy enough for you well then I know what is and that's exactly it's it's the plague. We, we got the plague. Yep it's Jover. It's actually Jover. We got the plague and it's pretty bad. Thessalonicon boils. Uh, so far, zero fatalities. It has just begun, but it's, it's, it's ripe. It's ripe with a lot of um, problemos, as I like to say. Now, before this gets out of hand, I'm actually gonna close my gates because I do panic a little bit. I am a panicker. So I'm gonna be isolating the capital for a little while. And I am also going to enter seclusion for a few years. Five years? Okay, that's a long ass time. I mean, it's it's gotta be done, man. Close the doors. We're not leaving the house anymore. We're gonna wait and see how the plague spreads around the entirety of the world here and wipes everybody out. Surprisingly, the Uyghur plague wasn't as bad as I thought. So maybe I'm just overreacting. This might be a genuine case of me overreacting way more than I should be. On the bright side, no, we do have a little kid now, Manuel, and he's got our inherited Herculean huge health boost from his mom, really not from us. We're gonna make sure this man here, uh, well, little kid right now, is gonna become an absolute Chad, worthy of the name Hercules, really, which he doesn't have. His name's actually Manuel, but shut up, okay? Okay. And our investment has paid off. We got Chadicus Maximus's Warhammer. So let's uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, use the Warhammer, shall we? Wait, what? what? Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on a second. What just happened? Uh, yeah. Let's uh, put this as our weapon. And whoa, another lover. What? I cannot believe this, Basilea Anna, my soulmate. How dare you do this? I am so disappointed. Who is this asshole, Zachariah? Come on, let me see. Courtier and best friend. She cheated on me with my best friend. Are you actually for real right now? Wow. 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 I'm gonna imprison the scumbag. Wait, what? Agni Semnos. A 50-year-old dwarf in court physician. What? I am not gonna... No. No. I'm, I'm good. What the hell, man? What is going on in my kingdom, dude? What is actually going on in my kingdom? This kind of behavior needs to stop right now. Right now. Another one. Are you shit... Who? How many people is this woman sleeping with right now? Alright. It's time to do some things here. First off, you you scumbag, you're gonna get executed. Yep, that's right. I don't give a single snaps. Oh, wait, I lose 25 legitimacy for that? Why? This guy slept with my... What? That's not even a fear, bro. Okay, let me torture him in that case. There you go. Yep, screw you, Zacharias. You scumbag, you actual freaking scumbag. And you, who's the other guy? 
You tell me right now. You actually tell me right now. I'm telling you, I'm gonna be real upset with you if you don't tell me. We're gonna request for this, maybe. Or now I want, you know what? One kid's enough. We got a kid. One kid is enough. Yeah. She's not gonna accept. Can I just kill her then? Murder. Oh, 84% chance for success. Yep, it's time. We had a good run together, but um, I tried. I really tried. Oh, I forgot I also was learning my wife's language before she started sleeping with everybody in my freaking court. Looks like now I speak Romanian or Dacian Vulgar, whatever the hell language that might be. An odd smell. I give my armpit an inquisitive sniff. Perhaps she has a point. Wait, what? Oh boy, I got another kid. Well, this kid might not actually be mine considering she was sleeping around. I don't know, man. I feel like the second kid there might have a little bit of a hunting accident, if you know what I'm saying here. Let's continue getting some uh, perks. I'm gonna go for the uh, defensive measures. We want to go all the way to architect. I like to get the architect trait so we get the construction time reduction, the cost reduction, and stewardship plus two, as well as um, let's go ahead and get our first dynasty legacy. I think there's a few new now legacies, right? Ooh, I like that. Control growth plus 0 0.1 per month and popular opinion plus five. Gain a great deed for Flavius Legend Seed. This Legend Seed is usable only once per dynasty. can be used by any member. Oh my god, I'm going for this. I'm actually going for this. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. First Legend Seed. Alright, so we actually have two Legend Seeds now. We got Custodian of the Holy Site and we have a Roman Heritage. To create the Roman Heritage one, we need 400 gold and 75 prestige. Wait, do we not have 75 prestige? Oh, I gotta be level 3. I have to be illustrious for a level of fame. Okay. What about Custodian of the Holy Site? Gotta be Paragon of Virtue. Oh my god. Alright, no problem. We'll work on that. Let's get a Court Chronicler, because uh, we haven't gotten one yet. Someone that's actually qualified. Eustathia. She looks very qualified to me. There you go. This also increases our Court Grandeur by one, so that's pretty juicy. And we're gonna set her on default to search for legends. I'm gonna not waste any more time, and I'm gonna be attacking uh, this guy here. He's got an ally in the House of Sawadir. I don't even know where that is. I don't care, though. Let's go. We're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna raise our armies, and we're gonna take back Crete. We're gonna give it out to our heir. I think, like, that's the best choice here. And we're gonna march straight for their capital. There you go. Crush the enemy scumbags. 95% chance we kill Basileia Anna. She's also pregnant with our kid. Is it our kid, though? That's the real question, man. Is it really our kid? Am I gonna be a scumbag and I'm gonna kill my own kid? Is that is that what I'm gonna do here? I'm not. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna cancel. I change. I had a last minute change of heart. I'm gonna cancel it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try and kill her anymore. Abandon this game. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try. She she might have done the deed, but you know what? I'm gonna be a nice guy and I'm gonna um, forgive her. I'm actually gonna forgive her. That's what I'm gonna do here. We have a third son now. Okay. Well, that's a lot of boys, isn't it? How about we get a girl at some point, woman? Okay, so we've basically chased down and wiped out the entirety of the enemy army. Now, um, we just gotta take their capital. What is this? Uh, teach him a lesson? Why not? Why not? He gained 25 opinion of us. He's happy that we beat him up. Obviously, that's how things work in the real life, of course. And I accept the gift, Duke Suyanis. Thank you very much. You're very kind. You're my favorite new vassal as of now. Totally not because you bribed me, of course. And we managed to enforce our deal. There you go. Thank you very much. I will take Take that from you. You are uh, the best, but not really. Now let's disband this. Let's check the plague map mode. Make sure we don't have anything that we need to worry about here. So far, nothing. That's good. That's actually very good. You can get a new perk as well, apparently. So let's go ahead and do that as well. We're gonna go for organized muster rolls, which gives us levy reinforcement rate plus 100. That is actually really good. Popular opinion plus 50 up next, and domain limit plus two. So amazing. We're gonna keep this because our domain limit is nine, so we can have even more than this actually. And I'm gonna organize some more expansion into the uh, Arab lands. Let me see who is uh, weak and easy to conquer. Maybe these lands, actually. Invited to court Constantinos' hunt? Uh, sure, I'll go. You know what? Let's go. Let's just go. Let's just go. I want to have a little bit of fun at the hunt, you know? It's, it's been a while since we've been outside of our house, since, you know, we've been stuck in here for five years. <laughs> Trying to avoid the plague that killed literally nobody, apparently. Wait, what? Cretan is a separate uh, culture from uh, Greek. What? No way. I didn't know that's a thing. They actually added a separate culture for Crete in here. Wow. So that's basically a subculture of the Byzantine culture, essentially. Do we have any changes here? Let's see. We got Vlach, the country culture, and yeah, okay. This is, in my opinion, the worst thing about CK3. It is extremely inaccurate when it comes to this shit. Big time inaccurate. Oh, oh, we got a big plague. What 
what is this? What the hell is this? Louis Pox. It killed 27 people so far. All right, well, fingers crossed we managed to cultivate Louis Pox and we uh, spread it around a little bit, you know what I mean? Since we had that little hunt in uh, Syracuse, I decided that it's time that I get the entirety of uh, Sicily, not just Syracuse, right? So let's raise the troops and get to work. We gots to be taking these lands back. We gots to really be taking these lands back here. Straight to the capital, obviously. I was a little bit worried that I'm not going to be able to enforce this since uh, the uh, Aglabids are at war with somebody else here. I'm not sure who, but I did get 100% war score after sieging most of their land. So I managed to get the stuff that I wanted to get. There you go. We're now at 8 out of 9 domains. So I'm going to disband my army and I feel like I should go ahead and take these lands up next. I can definitely do a war against that uh, particular border there. Oh wait, actually I'm at war. I just forgot that I started getting attacked by these bastards. Some of the Russians here. High Chiefdom of Levedia decided they wanted to take the provinces that we have in Crimea. Our last foothold in Crimea. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to be crushing them and I'm going to be uh, telling them to bugger off basically. <laughs> Alright, we managed to get their capital. Now we're going to turn back here and we're going to be uh, wiping out their armies as well, not just the capital. Oh my god, Agni. By the way, Agni turns out to be a freaking witch. So... I don't even know how to deal with this, man. I really don't even know how to freaking deal with this. Do I dismiss her? She's gonna freaking put a curse on me and murder me in my sleep, isn't she? Now I gotta look for another physician as well, which kind of sucks, PP, because I'm really low on cash, unfortunately, because of horrible events. <laughs> After a little bit of time of saving up money and not going to war to save up money, we now have the money to go for the uh, Roman heritage legend. So right now, we're just starting this, right? It's gonna take a while, but if everything goes to plan, then we might be able to get claims on every existing didgery title inside of the Roman Empire, which is a massive amount. Basilius Chanicus Maximus of the Byzantine Empire was born to a great Roman lineage to rule the Roman Empire as his forebearers would have. Upon hearing vague rumors that plagued the land, Chanicus Maximus set his heart to accomplish the difficult endeavor. We could increase the quality of this if we had more money. We don't, however. Let's save more money and increase the quality then, shall we? Hell yeah, let's do that, boys. We want the best legend imaginable. The best one. I like this. I actually love this. The thing that the, basically you get your own book about this particular character. That is just juicy, man. I like that. I like the flavor they added with this freaking deals. Oh, nine. My beloved wife has passed away. And it's not even my fault. I, I want to point that out. It's not even my fault. Now, that being said, uh, it do suck. So I'm going to have to um, find somebody else now. Go ahead and search for someone that's got amazing traits, of course, and maybe an alliance to go along. Alongside it. I wouldn't mind that whatsoever, but the traits are the most important thing I'd say. Hot damn, look at that. Intelligent. That is the trait I'm looking for here. And we can get an alliance with the County of Mero, which is some sort of Nubian county, I assume. She's three years old. Okay. Um, can everybody just look the other way for a little bit of time? My mom. Uh, the trait's really good. The trait's really, really good. It's all about the trait. All right, let's see what this looks like when we increase the quality. So we gain 400 legitimacy from the get go, and the text changes, didn't it? It. Yes, it did change. Oh, that is so freaking cool, dude. Okay, to upgrade it again, we need 482 uh, ducats. That is a lot. Okay. Uh, okay, sure. We'll wait. And we have to spread the legacy, the legend to more baronies. It's going to slowly spread, not to worry. We're going to have to get ready for this war here as well. No, no, they got attacked and integrated by the Abbasids. Oh, that's so unfortunate, man. Oh, should have seized the moment. That's on me right there. Valachia seems to have also rebelled against the Bulgarians. Maybe. Maybe it's time for me to attack the Bulgarians or maybe it's time for me to reconquer the areas in the south of Italy because it's not too difficult, is it? Yeah, it's actually pretty easy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's raise our armies and uh, retake uh, the Italian peninsula, I guess. The real Roman lands, essentially, right? We've actually been really good at saving money and we've also kind of extorted some of that money from our uh, vassals. But that's aside from the point because now we got enough to increase the quality of our Roman heritage. There you go. Once more. And now the maintenance is 15.6 per month. However, we do have mythical legend quality so we can complete this and look at that. We get access to the consolidate the kingdom decision allowing us to immediately did you redrift the kingdom into your realm access to legendary palace option. You may select the heritage and language from your legendary culture when you diverge your culture. You can claim on any existing title inside the Roman Empire and access to the commission legend artifact decision allowing you to commission a chronicle to commemorate your legend and 600 legitimacy. Look at that, boys. Oh, la, 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 la. 
The Book of the House of Flavius, Strength, Honor, and Bravery. Hot diggity dong. There you go. It's completed. Our very first legend. I better have gotten an achievement for that shit, bro. I better have gotten an achievement. All right. This is the legend map mode. We have a Roman heritage as our legend here. Our very first and awesome legend. Any other legends around the world? We got one here, apparently. The Custodian of the Holy Site. Okay. And that's about it. No other legends except these. Oh, no. We have one in Africa, actually. The Blood of Allah. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Whatever the case, now it's time to get back to our bees and honeys because, uh, you know, we need a court physician and Agni Semnos, the witch that we previously fired, would be awesome for this. She does hate us, but you know what? Even though she might attempt to murder us, she is a good physician. I'd like to have her around just in case the big plagues come over and try to, you know, ravage everything around here. Now, we can clear grounds for a legendary building. We can do a legendary shrine shrine, state, statue, palace, watchtower, or hunting lodge. Right now, only the palace is available. So let's select that building and clear the grounds for it. Hey, there you go. We got the achievement. Hell yeah, man. Let's see. So we have a legendary, complete a legend. A very easy achievement, apparently. And I'm also going to be vassalizing more of my neighbors. I've already vassalized uh, some of these guys over in Serbia, and it looks like I can vassalize the dudes in Slavonia. Everybody just wants to be my vassal without any actual uh, conquest. I like that. I actually like that. Slowly expanding the empire again. Now, Chaticus Maximus has successfully averted the plagues and created himself a nice Roman legacy that's essentially paved on the bodies of the multiple plague victims that we've uh, had to uh, throw down the river. But it is what it is. It is the Middle Ages, and that's just how things go here. Hope you guys enjoyed this run. And if you did, don't forget to check out my link in the description to get the DLC for yourself. It's honestly one of the most fun DLCs I've seen so far for CK3. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, watch out for this one up next and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support 